Last September, the U.S. government placed sanctions on China's largest chipmaker, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or SMIC, citing unacceptable risk of diversion to a military end use in China. Two months later, China released its next five-year plan, elevating innovation and technology to a new height to help China achieve technological self-reliance. On March 1st, China's Minister of Industry and Information Technology held a press conference and announced that China had a 20% domestic semiconductor industry growth in 2020, which is three times higher than global peers. Hello, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lei. Many media outlets in the West reported Monday's press conference in Beijing, but no major Western media reported another important event in the Chinese semiconductor industry that happened the day before. On February 28th, one of the major semiconductor manufacturing plants that was touted as part of China's plan to become a self-sufficient chip maker announced that it had no plan to resume work or production. The management team asked all employees at Wuhan Hongxin Semiconductor Manufacturing Company to resign by March the 5th. How can one of the most celebrated Chinese chip projects just stop like that? Before I get into what's really behind the failure of Wuhan Hongxin, let's first take a 3,000 feet view of China's overall semiconductor industry. After the Chinese State Council announced the National Integrated Circuit Industry Development Promotion Program in June 2014 and launched the IC Industry Investment Fund, it has ignited a rush across China amongst various levels of government to build large-scale chip industrial parks and chip cities. I searched the internet and found that there are about 250 integrated circuit companies in the world and about a few dozen semiconductor manufacturers. The list may be incomplete, but are pretty close. But do you know how many semiconductor companies there are in China? As of October 27, 2020, according to a Chinese online business registry, there were more than 270,000 Chinese companies whose core business includes integrated circuits, chips, and semiconductors in its description. From January 1st to October 27, 2020, there were more than 58,000 new integrated circuit-related companies created in China. Among them, nearly 19,000 were created in the third quarter last year. Even in Tibet, there are companies in the business of semiconductors. Interestingly, many of these chip companies were previously in construction, construction engineering, human resource services, biomedicine, clothing, and cement. In a country where making knockoff merchandises and counterfeit products is acceptable, Rewriting your business description to take advantage of government programs is entirely legitimate. Corporate taxes in China are notoriously high. The World Bank estimated in 2016 that total corporate tax in China was 68% as a percentage of profits, uh, which includes both direct and indirect tax. As a result, massive numbers of businesses have relabeled their organizations as semiconductor businesses in China to take advantage of the tax cut and government funding. Politically, these businesses are just taking advantage of the so-called Great Leap Forward spirit that the regime promotes toward China's chip independence. However, the problem is that it has seriously disrupted government funding and caused a lot of waste. The widespread corruption within the system has also added a fatal blow to an already convoluted process. Wuhan Hongxin is just a perfect example. Wuhan Hongxin Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was established in November 2017 with a total investment of 128 billion yuan, 
which was about 20 billion U.S. dollars. It was a manufacturing plant built to focus on 40 nanometer and 7 nanometer logic process production and wafer level packaging production. Wuhan Hongxin was one of China's most celebrated government-endorsed semiconductor investment projects. The facility was expected to create 50,000 jobs and have an annual output of 60 billion yuan worth of chips. In September 2018, Wuhan's mayor, Zhou Xianwang, personally kicked off the second phase of the Hongxin Semiconductor Industrial Park. At the end of 2019, Hongxin held a ceremony to receive an ASML lithography machine, which was uh, claimed to be the only domestic machine in China to make 7 nanometer chips. Hongxin was reportedly on track to build three production lines, which upon completion would deliver about 60,000 chips a month. Three years after it was founded, in July 2020, however, the Hongxin bubble burst. It was found to be in financial difficulties and all constructions were eventually suspended. Upon investigation, the entire project seemed to be an unsolved mystery. Wuhan Hongxin's initial founding capital was 2 billion yuan. Its two shareholders were the state-owned Asset Supervision and Administration Bureau of the People's Government of Dongxihu District in Wuhan, which had 10% shares. And the other holder is Beijing Light Blueprint Technology, which had 90% shares. Three years after Wuhan Hongxin was established, only the Dongxihu District government had paid its share of the capital, and the remaining 1.8 billion funding capital subscribed by the majority owner, Beijing Light Blueprint, had never been realized. Chinese journalists also found that Li Xueyan and Cao Shan were the initial founders of Light Blueprint. Neither of them has any semiconductor experiences. People don't know much about them other than that Cao Shan is also the owner of Quanneng Advanced Integrated Circuit Industry Research Institute. But a Chinese netizen investigated the research institute and found that its website listed four Hong Kong pop stars as the founder and officers of the organization. The Chinese netizen posted a question online, are they here for semiconductor? and not for a concert. Can this be serious? Soon after that, the website was taken down. A Chinese media also revealed that the men who founded Light Blue Print also founded three other semiconductor companies. According to online business records, Chao Shan also established Yixing Integration Technology in Zhuhai in 2018, one year after he started the Wuhan Hongxin project. One month after his new company was set up, he used this new company as a shelf to set up two other companies, an integrated circuit manufacturing company and a wafer manufacturing company in two separate Chinese provinces on the same day. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button below. I really appreciate your help and thank you. Nobody seems to have solved the mystery of who this Chao Shan guy is. Maybe they can't find out who he is, or maybe they don't want to find out. But the question here is, how many Chinese chip tycoons like him are out there? And how have they fooled everyone involved, including some very intelligent individuals? Wuhan Hongxin successfully recruited one of the industry pioneers as its chief executive one year before its problem got exposed. Jiang Shangyi, the former chief operating officer of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's biggest chip maker, and a board member of SMIC, the largest chip maker in China, was hired by Wuhan Hongxin as its chief executive in 2019. Zhang resigned a year later, claiming that his experience at Hongxin was a nightmare. Hongxin isn't an isolated case. 
As of November 2020, at least six Chinese companies that each involved billions or tens of billions of dollars got suspended. In addition to Wuhan Hongxin, there is Nanjing Kedema. There are also GF Chengdu Integrated Circuit Manufacturing, Shanxi Kuntong Semiconductor Technology, Guizhou Huaxintong Semiconductor Technology, and Huai'an Dehuai Semiconductor. Huawei's founder, Ren Zhengfei, said last September at a university in Beijing, the difficulty that Huawei encounters today is not because of any mistakes we made by strategically overpowering a global platform. It's rather because the basic industries in China are not capable of manufacturing the advanced chips we design. His words might have just pointed out the real problem of China's semiconductor industry. The Chinese system is not short of smart, aggressive people who want to get ahead as fast as they can, but the system is lacking patient, devoted people who are happy with doing the basic foundational things. And this problem is not something China can solve by just spending money. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's important to let me know your thoughts. And thank you for watching.